Hi, I am Jean Schumacher, and I am co-founder of The Pregnancy Advantage, and my partner is Deborah Shapiro. She's a board-certified OBGYN, and together we created the program called The Pregnancy Advantage, and our objective is to help women to get their bodies pregnant ready and provide support, you know, if you're experiencing difficulties in conceiving, especially before you go down that in vitro rabbit fertilization hole. Okay, so today on our show, we have an amazing, amazing woman, Sir Dr. Lori Marbus from plantbasedtelehealth.com. And Dr. Marbus is double board certified family medicine and lifestyle medicine. She's been utilizing food as medicine since 2012. And she's also the managing editor of the Plantricians Project International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention. She's also the co-founder of the Healthy Human Revolution. If you've not seen this website, oh my gosh. The mission is to provide resources that are going to empower individuals for their knowledge, tools, and mindset to successfully adapt and sustain a whole food plant-based diet. So Dr. Marbus, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here today. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Dr. Marvis. Thank you so much. I have, we, we could probably have you back a few times because I have a lot of questions, but let's start, let's start with the first one, which is, you know, I was thinking of, you know, I've also been plant-based for about eight years and I think you have as well. And I was wondering what had inspired you to make this switch. Was it, was it much of a switch? I don't know how you were raised. Maybe you were raised more vegetarian. I don't know, but I'd love to hear your story. Well, I was raised in a home without a whole lot of resources. So we grew a lot of our food. We had a lot of beans and potatoes and, you know, we had some meat and, and definitely had dairy, but it certainly wasn't vegetarian or vegan or anything. We made healthier choices because the healthier choices were cheaper. <laughs> so, and that just carried through, which I was actually, you know, it was a, been a blessing in disguise. So, but the reason I went to a whole food plant-based diet, I had gotten out of the Air Force and we were living in... Western Colorado in a little town called Rifle. So if it's called Rifle, you can imagine the you know culture of people who live in a western part of Colorado in a town named Rifle. So that's <laughs> kind of a bead eaters, ranchers, hunters, hardworking people, amazing individuals. And I had three teenagers at the time and my husband. And so this was early 2012, and I had a patient come in to see me. I, I worked in a regular basically a county, you know, a little hospital there that was 25 bed hospital. It did, you know, called on the ER, did inpatient, outpatient, nursing home, the full gambit of family medicine, which was amazing. And so I had a variety of patients and this one patient came in to see me one day and she's like, Dr. Marvis, meat and dairy really upset my stomach. I said, okay, stop eating meat and dairy. It seems like a logical conclusion. And they'll still have food to eat and come back in 30 days and we'll just start adding things in and seeing kind of what the culprit is. Kind of like a simple elimination diet. I mean, that left in my mind, apparently I'm kind of slow processor, but she said, you know, I, I knew she'd have foodie, but it didn't like dawn on me that that left plants. You know, it seems logical, but it just didn't. And what happened was she came back in 30 days and I had made a note in her chart that this was what she was going to do. But she also brought her daughter with her to that appointment. And the reason she brought her 16 year old daughter was because something happened over the last 30 days. And she goes, now you tell Dr. Marvis what you did. And she actually pulled her out of school to come to her own mother's appointment for a follow up on a diet. And it was really intriguing because it really piqued my interest because I was like, what did she do? <laughs> mom pulled her out of school. And she said, well, Dr. Morris, I really wanted to support my mom. So I did the, you know, the diet with my mom and I felt so good. I stopped both my ADD meds in the last 30 days. And she'd been on them for four years. And she goes, and the mom is so sweet. I mean, those the sweetest people. And she's like, Dr. Morris, why was she able to do that? And not in a sense that she was angry, but frustrated. And why hadn't she been told that all it was was a simple dietary change and her daughter could be off medications that can have some potentially very serious side effects. And I said, I don't know, but that's the coolest thing I ever heard. <laughs> so I was like, let's talk. And so we started talking more. I was like, what did you eat? She goes, well, we ate what you said. I was like, no, 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 really. What did you eat? She goes, oh my goodness. So fruits and vegetables and beans and whole grains. I was like, so you're eating plants. She goes, oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> so I was like, oh my goodness, this is like plants. And it's like, it was like, finally the dimmer switch came on. I'm telling you, I'm very slow. But once I got it, I got it. And so after that, I went on Google, of course, and I Googled plant-based diet ADD. I was like, what is going on here? 
And the first book that came up was a China study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell, which we all adore and admire. And I ordered it. And when it arrived, I read it, literally read it in two days and I was engulfed and I would point out someone's like, look, they're turning off cancer teams with plants. This is freaking me out. <laughs> like, why didn't I learn about this? And I, I was like, whoa. And, and that process of trying to just wrap my head around this, I understood the potential for my patients, but I also understood that I would have to make that change in my own life to use that with my patients because I'm not going to tell a patient you know, to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. I just, I can't do that. And so what happened was I I was, you know, processing for a little bit. And about a week later, I had a patient come in to see me who had lupus and had been a patient for a little bit, a few months. And she was younger than me at the time. And she had been diagnosed a couple of years earlier and she was on 12 different medications. She was on my least, you know, 50 pounds of her weight, severe migraines daily, And she was telling me all of this. And I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, she was on high dose prednisone. She was on immune suppressants. I mean, these are some serious drugs with some very serious potential side effects. And what happened was she's sitting there and I'm going, I think this is my next one. I need to give this a try. And if she gets better, I'm going to do this. And because I also knew the challenges of bringing it home to three teenagers. Granted, I have amazing children, but still. <laughs> so when I, when I, uh, I listened to her and I said, you know, I don't have, there's no other drugs that we can try right now. And that's not really interesting about being primary care in a really rural setting. You are the endocrinologist, you are the rheumatologist, you are, you know, the early stages of cardiologist. I mean, you're having to do so much and cause we don't have access to the specialists that are in larger cities. I mean, if you've ever tried to travel over the Rocky mountains in the middle of winter and they shut down the highway, you're not going anywhere. You know, if I had to fly out a patient to Denver to a, a you know, an ICU site, like there's no pediatric ICUs on the Western side of Colorado. And so, I mean, it's a really serious thing. So you better, you better feel comfortable doing a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And anyway, that's outside of that. But what I said is like, there really are no medications. Like this is, this is what we got. But I said like, let's try this little experiment. If you'd be willing. I said, I've got about two weeks of knowledge. (laughs) And I was like, would you be willing to go, you know, change what's on the end of your fork to see if it'll change how you're feeling? She goes, I'll try anything. I was like, okay. So before you leave, though, let's measure what we call the CRP. It's a C-reactive protein. It's an inflammatory marker in the serum, in your blood. And I said, you know, let's check it now. And I said, you have to come back in 14 days because 30 days is just too long. I'm very excited about this. And I was already, I mean, I'm already plotting how I'm going to do this myself in my own life. But what happened was she came back in 14 days. So her original CRP was three times high normal. And she came back in 14 days, eight pounds lighter, no migraines, and her CRP was just outside normal by 0.1. And she felt amazing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so <laughs> if you fast forward five months, just to get a, you know, a little bit of understanding how she did, she lost 50 pounds. She was off seven or 12 medications off both of her uh, lupus medications. And she did amazing. Now she had other health issues that should be on long-term medications, but we've decreased the burden of her medications and helped her feel better just by changing what's literally on the end of her fork. And so I went home the day she followed up and I said, I came home to a 13 year old, a 15 year old and an 18 year old and my poor husband. And I said, this is what we're doing guys. We're going on a plant-based diet. I literally took a garbage bag and I threw everything out that was animal product Mm. out. I mean like out, threw it in the garbage. Um, and I said, this is what we're doing. And my kid's like, she's lost her mind again. And my husband's <laughs> like, you're still cooking and, and buying groceries. And I said, yeah, he goes, okay. And I was like, all right, here we go. And this is why we've been married 28 years, by the way, because he's a very nice person. And interesting thing was I also had a, a quarter of a grass fed beef, you know, the, in my freezer, in my garage. Now that is not something you can just throw out in the garbage can. And I was like, what am I going to do with this? Am I going to give it to the shelter? Cause I'm not going to give it to a human. <laughs> so I'm like, now I'm thinking food of a very different way. And we, two days later, so that was a Friday, two days later on Sunday, we came back from church and I, and I, I swear they're literally the freezer broke in. I don't know if you've ever had the stench of the decaying flesh, but is in the smell and the fluids and well, 
I never, ever, ever, ever wanted to eat meat after that day. And my husband's like, if you hadn't been with me, I would have sworn you unplugged this thing. I was like, nope. I said, that is a divine intervention, my dear. And you will <laughs> listen. This is what we're doing. And he went on to lose 70 pounds. My children are now, my daughter is about to graduate medical school in May. She'll be 27. I have a 24-year-old and a 22-year-old who are all plant-based. My 24-year-old does 500 pull-ups a day. My 22-year-old just in 20, when he was 21, did his first half Ironman. And these kids are incredible. My husband did his first full Ironman at, mm-hmm. at 49. I run 30 miles a week. Um, I'm 50, but I feel like I'm in my 20s. I'm waiting for my, like, this, this is a trick, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but that is really how it all happened was because the patients, you know, was upset with milk and dairy or meat and dairy upset their stomach. And that's how it all started. Amazing. And you didn't even have to take them off of, like, were they eating organic? Did they have, were they having any artificial colors or flavors? Or were they, were they just eating whole plant I, foods or just I no li- or dairy? I just literally just said, eat whole food plant-based diet. And I remember in rural, in rural setting, you're not going to have all the fancy restaurants to go to. Like if you went to out to eat, it's a steakhouse. They might have a salad and a baked potato that you could order, <laughs> but they had to buy food from Walmart and city market, which is their local grocery stores. And that literally is it. And, you know, there's a, there's a large, vast array of food deserts. So when you travel, you go and you buy your food because there's just not a large quantity of restaurants that are going to sustain a healthy diet. And that was to our advantage being in that position. And so, but I learned a lot over the next year for sure on how to actually introduce this because, you know, the ACLM board certification wasn't available. I didn't even hear of the ACLM. You know, doc, thank God for Dr. McDougall. He had a few articles for physicians. I was searching everywhere. I, you know, Dr. Greger had some, some things that I could start, you know, working in my head. And I had some amazing patients that were very right. patient with me and literally helped me understand what I need to do better. And so I ended up creating like a 30-page handout I would save <laughs> for my patients my poor clinic, they were very supportive of me. I killed some trees guys, but I saved some lives. So, you know, what I would do is I'd have, you know, 25 patients coming in. I would look at the, you know, four or five that I felt really need to hear this message. I highlighted them. I printed off their packet that they were going to get that day. And lo and behold, they walk in and they're going to get that plant-based message. And I'm going to give them three steps a day to start. And that's how it all started. And it was, they're, they're very receptive. We ended up doing a study at my local hospital um, with 30 employees. A dear friend of mine, Dr. Or not Dr. But um, a chef, Martin Oswald, who's an Aspen and came and worked with our chefs and taught them how to, you know, prepare delicious, healthy plant-based foods. And it was phenomenal. We had, you know, pre-diabetics and only pre-diabetic people stopping blood pressure meds, lost of 20 pounds in 30 days. I mean, so there's some really incredible opportunities if people just take the moment to think outside the box and, and see what they can do. Just got to do something. Yeah. It's fantastic. And then you, and then you did have the community support. You had the hospital support. That's something I didn't really find here when I tried the changes here there was there was definitely a lot of a lot of pushback from the other doctors from the is, um, is, no i'm not saying that. i had some pushback from the local registered dietitian that we had i had some pushback mm-hmm. from some colleagues but i'm like listen you can't argue yeah my my evidence is anecdotal but i'm digging into the research and i'm very stubborn when there is something that i can offer <laughs> people whether they're my patient or not that can help them why would you not want me to present that message? Because you have a problem yourself and you can't, you know, change your own diet. Well, that's your issue. My issue is not, that's not, that's not what I worry about. What I worry is about is that these patients have the opportunity to make an informed decision. And that should be every physician's mantra is because if you don't allow them to make the informed decision with every opportunity, I consider that malpractice. And I think that's being harmful. And this is not a patriotic you know, type of setting. This is a partnership between you and your patient, and you should be making those decisions together. Now, you may not agree with what their final decision is, but you have to respect it because it's their life. However, I will, it won't be because I didn't try, but if you still make the, in my mind, the wrong decision not to go on a plant-based diet, you're going to hear the message again. I mean, you come back to see me, you're going to hear it again, because I really truly believe after, especially after this long and as many patients as I've had, this is the right decision for everybody. And this whole, oh, my body's different. No, it's not. You have a human body. Just like right. a giraffe. Every giraffe has the same giraffe body. It's a giraffe body. It's not a 
you know, a special giraffe body. It's like, no, you have a human body. Now there are some special cases with genetics um, as far as like mutations or something that we might have to work around, but mm -mm. Well, it's lucky that, that your patients were, that you were open to this because when I first started down this road, I literally would bring stuff into my doctor and go, you're going to read this and I want to report. I want to hear from you like next week, you know, and she wouldn't call me back and be like, I'd call the office. She hasn't done her homework. Please have her call me, you know, and I was very adamant. And, you know, one of the first things that I saw was my, you know, my thyroid was healing because she looked at me straight in the eye and said, you're going to be on thyroid medication for the rest of your life. Uh, no. So. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been uh, hypothyroid for 24 years. And at that time I had been hypothyroid for 15 years, actually occurred during pregnancy. So my son was actually born hypothyroid and <clears throat> with his initial testing, you know, the little hill prick that they do. And then they repeated it in two weeks and he was fine, but he went on to develop severe dyslexia, which was a challenge in my, that's an, that's an incredible story of, of incredible work ethic. And this young man is one of the phenomenal humans that I know. I'm blessed to have called him mom. I don't know how God was so generous with me, but I got three of them. I'm like, wow, this is great. <laughs> But, you know, what was interesting is at that 15 year mark, I had escalating doses over the years and didn't really think, I mean, this is just what it is, right? I'm, I got thyroid issues and nobody's ever told me that it could get better. Well, I went on that plant-based diet and lo and behold, I started, this is really interesting how I figured that out was I started having some shoulder issues. Now I've been active. I've done, you know, all sorts of like tough mutter races and, you know, I'm going up on 11 mile hikes, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm just going to do it. You know, if I, it is what it is. Um, but I was like, you know, I didn't injure myself in any weird way, but it got started getting really stiff. And it got to the point that I really, someone couldn't even literally lift my arm up. It was like stuck. I was having to put my, excuse me, but I had to put my bra on in the front and flip it around. And uh, I did that. I was like, what is going on? So I went to a friend of mine, he's an orthopedic surgeon. And he's like, you'd have adhesive capsulitis. I was like, adhesive capsulitis, like frozen shoulder. I was like, what in the world? And he goes, yeah. So if you're over 40, I'm like, well, yeah, okay, I was over 40. Um, diabetes, nope, don't have diabetes, but hyperthyroidism. I was like, well, I don't have hyper, I have hypo, but I do take medication. He goes, do you think I could be overdosing? <laughs> like, I've never had that happen before. So I checked my TSH and it was zero. And I was like, I'm highly overdosed. I'm in a very hyperthyroid state. I was like, oh my goodness, this is insane. And I, I just continued to escalate. So I suffered literally, it went from one shoulder to the next. There's like 16% of people will get in both shoulders for two years. I said the, you know, the whole plant based diet is supposed to be helpful. Well, it helped me, but then the medication was harmful because I took too much. Um, so I'm very cognizant of the thyroid issue. And that was 15 years later and I'm still on medication, but it's such a much lower dose. I mean, I had done my job, I guess, of burning out my thyroid. Um, well, <laughs> but you know, I still had to use some, but, it, but there was still some functionality left. I was like, Whoa, that's incredible. <laughs> like, you, oh my did you have, did you add did you add iodine to your diet? No, no. I, I had used, still use iodized salt. I don't use it a whole lot, but I do take an iodine supplement now you, because we do really try, especially as we're getting older. And you know, my real dad had his first heart attack at 38. My mom's dad died at 46. My mother had breast cancer. Her mother, all, I mean, I, I have genetic, I have genetic badness. So, so do I. Yeah. <laughs> So we understand the choices that, you know, as we get a little older and we're like, all right, we're going to have to be good. So yeah, no, the, I was using iodized salt until that point, but I didn't add anything extra. I was just eating a whole food plant-based diet, literally mm -hmm. nothing wow. organic. I mean, I would buy organic when I could, but I was just really trying to just eat healthy plants. I was trying to stay away from oil, but that's, right. that's about it. That's fantastic. Those are amazing stories. And I hope everybody listens and hears <laughs> what's possible because I think people don't always know what is possible. And it is important to realize sometimes that your physicians need to be educated as well. There are opportunities for them, but sometimes they're just slow on the uptake and they have mm. also some incentives, financial incentives, possibly not to make you as healthy as possible, which is disappointing, but it's true. Yeah, but I, I rather I really like to think that that's less of an issue versus people just don't understand the science. They think this is too simple of a tool to have such profound effect. And who's right? going to so, change? Right. Because I think that's one of the biggest issues is who's going to do this? It's too much work. My patients aren't going to do this, you know. And right. When you start to think about this, really? I mean, and you I, can't even give it the choice. 
So, so exactly. You're exactly right. What you said, you have to be given the choice and like, who are you to decide what they will or will not do? So if you have an opportunity to decrease the burden of a chronic disease for a patient and literally change their life, why wouldn't you give them that opportunity? Well, if that's, if you don't, then you shouldn't be a physician. Sorry. Right. I've, I've had, um, I've had a few experiences that would probably curl your hair. I mean, it's really oh, not sure. very unpleasant. I worked with a vascular surgeon once who I was assisting him in a, in a procedure. I was just in the operating room. And, and so we were doing this Fempop bypass. He was pulling out this gunk from this vessel. I'd never mm. seen plaque before. It looked like chewed chewing gum. And mm. I said, look, Dr. Dr. G, this is why you should tell your patients about a plant-based diet. And he said, yeah, look, this is why I shouldn't. Oh, wow. But you know, yep. he later passed away because he developed... Crohn's, and I've actually reversed Crohn's in a patient, got them off Humira, but he didn't want to do that because he didn't believe yep. in it, you know. So I, he went on Humira, he developed lymphoma. And oh, it's called karma. That is called karma. There was another cardiologist. I had, I had uh, Neil Barnard in for a, a grand rounds, and I said to this cardiologist, come on in and speak, you know, come in and meet. This is Dr. Barnard. And he said, oh, Debbie, you know, they call me Debbie when they're mm-hmm. a, a diminutive, right? Oh, right. <laughs> oh Debbie. It's too extreme. Oh, as a cardiologist, and he was one of the good guys. So I mean, we it's so I've had this other, other but anyway, let's moving on. I, you know, there are some mixtures of of, of of vitamins and supplements. One of them is yeah. complement, which I I do yeah. recommend a lot because it has the B twelve and the D. It has the um, it doesn't so have cyanocobalamin, and com- right? Yeah. But now there's a complement plus. They add the iodine and the zinc and the K two. Yeah. But I'm. I don't know whether we should be supplementing zinc on everybody if we're eating nuts and seeds. Um, so I measure, right? So uh-huh. I measure patients and I have a lot. Of, I take complement myself. I give it to my family. I think it's a very good product. The complement plus. The complement plus. Mm-hmm. And they've had some manufacturing issues. So there's been some delay for six or so months. And that's been a little frustrating. But I certainly think, you know, measure it. So I measure iodine. I measure zinc. We measure selenium. We measure magnesium. We measure the vitamin D, the B12, the omegas. And we measure all of those things. I measure homocysteine, methylmalonic acid. So I'm looking at my patients. So wait, I have a, I call it my whole food plant-based panel. <laughs> so like these are my patients who are eating the diet. And they want to know, am I, am I planning my meals correctly? Am I eating enough variety? What am I doing? You know, we're going through and we're talking about how are their, how's their energy? What is their, you know, some of them are not eating enough calories. I have some patients who are just losing too much and I wish I had that problem. I don't, but you know, really, I, I, do, really? I, do, I do have them there. Is, and there's actually more than I realize because now all of my patients want to do a plant-based diet, which is, that's a whole nother amazing, it's just the coolest job ever. And it is just way cool. And so I'm sitting here looking at these folks and there are cases, you know, my patients are low on iodine. I've seen a few low in zinc. I've not seen anybody high on zinc that was taking the compliment. I have seen a few, oh, maybe, maybe 2%, 3% are a little bit higher on the selenium, but I think they're also eating some high selenium containing foods like the Brazil nuts. So we just talk about that and, you know, adjust accordingly and retest and Many of them do fine. I actually, most of the time, end up adding even more vitamin D3 because I just don't, people, some people are really struggling to get that vitamin D up. Things I've found is if you eat a nut, you know, one of the things I do is like I use my, I make an omega-3, omega-6 nut bowl and, you know, I put one cashew, one pecan, you know, and just, Mm -hmm. you know, putting in chia seeds, hemp seeds. Yeah. And so then I'll use that as, as a condiment on my salad. Yep. And so that's the time when I take my vitamin D because I've got some of the fat to help get the vitamin D into, it's because it's fat soluble. So it helps to get it into the cells. So if you're doing that, that's one of the tips, you know, tricks I've learned along the way is to help get mm-hmm. that fat in. You know, that's when I take my vitamin D supplement. Yeah. Well, it's important too to have, you know, with, you know, some, a little bit of fat in your diet regardless. Right. So and the fat doesn't have to come from oils, obviously. So, but yeah, so I use like a quarter, I don't know, anywhere about a quarter of a cup with nuts and seeds throughout the day. And that's what I encourage my patients to do. I'm a big fan of, of you know, the soy products, tofu, tempeh, because they are very good for bone health. So there's a little bit more fat in those. Got to be a little bit more careful with my diabetics because, I'm, you know, we, we really monitor that fat intake, especially until, you know, they can reverse some of the insulin resistance. And my type ones do amazing on a plant-based diet. And 
of my patients started at four as a type one and he's five now he's doing amazing he's got a, he's got an incredible mother and she's right on board and it's just been a real joy to to work with people like this wonderful so you were saying that you you actually measure zinc iodine magnesium the uh, selenium. B12, the functional b12 the selenium and the d3 yeah so b12 the homocysteine methylonic acid d3 uh your omega-3 and it depends if you do lab core or you do quest uh, what their panels exactly measure but we measure to see where they're at and you know what's really really fascinating granted these are anecdotal you know i'm a big fan of the science but i am going to share with you almost a decade now of doing this and the vitamin d is really really amazing when i have people who are super low and i'm talking about people who are under 20 when they first are measured mm -hmm. and they're fatigued or depressed um really really struggling the vitamin d i usually put them on a high dose for about 12 weeks and then we measure and see if we need like to do 50, it again Fifty thousand a week like that yep fifty thousand of the d2 weekly and what's incredible is these people have like life altering experiences and not all of them but many and you know, as if you're higher BMI, you're going to need more vitamin D3 because this is, you know, a fat soluble vitamin. The other thing that I've also found with my patients who are over 400 pounds, my morbidly obese patients, is that many times we will check a lipid panel and their cholesterol will actually be low many times. But it's not because they probably don't have, you know, arterial disease or anything like that. It's just that the, the liver just can't keep up with the cholesterol needs of a body that weighs 400 pounds. And so that's been really interesting too. And as people lose weight, they'll see cholesterol shoot up. I'm like, well, there, there are some reasons. We just have to be kind of logical about thinking about it. But yeah, those, those are the things that I check. But yeah. Fantastic. And LabCorp, and LabCorp has that. Yeah, LabCorp and Quest. Mm -hmm. And Quest. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. One of the most serious complications of pregnancy that I've been seeing more of as, as uh, more recently as I was practicing obstetrics was mm -hmm. the hypertensive complications with preeclampsia, and seizures and stroke. And so I was, you know, in, in the pregnancy advantage, one of the things that we really do focus on is getting people's blood pressures low before they conceive. And then we, we believe that a plant-based diet is going to keep them steady. And I was just wondering what your, what your experience was in getting people off of their blood pressure medications. And do you have a reliable sort of prescription mm -hmm. for this? Um, yeah. In my experience, we had to get people off of oils in addition to whole plant foods, but really reduce those oils and salt. But what do, what do, what do you, what do you do? No, you're a hundred percent. It's the, the, you know, get the low hanging fruit first is remove salt. They're not going to be happy, but you're like, you want a healthy baby. <laughs> you want to decrease your risk for, you know, all these different potential complications. And so salt is the first one oil. I agree. I'm not a, an oil advocate. If you're young and healthy and not going to be pregnant or having or have blood pressure and you're like my 21 year old, he may eat something with oil in it. That's fine on occasion. But he also understands that, you know, it's not something to be, you know, cooking or adding to your salads and all that type of stuff. So yes, um, the salt and oil are, are big ones, but I also try to increase those really high nitrate containing foods, right? So these are your dark green leafies and I don't care how I have to get you in, in your body. They just need to get in your body. So they could be a salad. Anyone who knows me, I'm not a huge salad eater myself just because I just don't have time to chew. It is like I am busy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to chew for an hour. I appreciate those who do and I applaud you, but I can't. And but I still get my greens in. So that may be a soup or a smoothie or something else stuck in a, a veggie burger, whatever it might be, but I'm getting those greens in daily. And that really is key. And then you know the ground flaxseed has some really interesting research. And the hibiscus tea at high doses can be helpful. I would have to do more research on pregnancy because there can be some complications with other things with the hibiscus tea. But you know, those things are, are very, very helpful. And as you're moving into that plant-based diet, you know, exercise is also going to be very important. It'll have some improvement with blood pressure. And, but sometimes that, you know, in your younger population, you could probably push that a little bit faster. I do have you know, young people to older people, but the majority I'd say are my middle age or older patients who have had hypertension for many years. And it may take six, 12, sometimes longer months to get them off all the medication. It takes mm -hmm. some time. And I think diabetes certainly reacts a lot faster. And it's, 
that is that's a really fun thing to have people you know stop insulin very quickly and to you know reverse their diabetes and my type ones using you know half the amount of insulin that they did before even sometimes even more than that and you know it's 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 a uh, an interesting thing also you have your type one and a half diabetics i know we're getting to about diabetes but bit that i've attracted a lot of those because these are the ones who don't necessarily get better on a plant-based diet or they get a little bit better for a little bit and then they continue to progress and so yeah it's been really interesting challenging opportunity and there's certain medications that some people will do better with than others and you know some you have to wean down slowly so it's 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 an art to be prescribing and it's you know I'm a big fan of you know they talk to you about motivational interviewing I think those are very helpful techniques so when a patient comes in and you're meeting them where you're at you're gauging their agreeableness to change and where their willingness to change but as the time goes on and we develop a relationship, you're going to hear more and more. And I'm going to push you to think about your boundaries and what are the opportunities you have for your health. Because honestly, I, I'm not here to, you know, let you guide the boat to the destination that you want to go to by the means that you think you know. I'm, I, that's why you came to me is to help you get there a little bit faster. So I'm going to keep you from going like this and we're going to go like this, right? You know, so I, you know, I tend to want to push my patients a little bit more than I think they're expecting. You know, I look all nice and sweet, but you just got to watch it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's really, really important that people understand that you have to, as a physician, especially as a lifestyle medicine physician, it is imperative that we make people open their minds, take off the blinders to the possibilities of health and to understand normal is not chronic disease. And it doesn't mean you, you know, that some people don't have chronic disease and they're doing everything right. Yes, that happens. But the majority of this is a choice. And so, you know, it really is important. And that may really piss people off. And I'm sorry, but we are making poor choices every single day. Mm -hmm. And it really is imperative. If you want to live a long, healthy life, that this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be born. We live our life to the lifespan of a human being. And then we're supposed to die quickly, like every other animal on earth. They live their life to the span, lifespan typically of that type of animal, and then they die quickly. Now, it doesn't, you know, I'm being very blunt and very, you know, objective about that, but that really is important to understand between the birth and the death, there should be healthy years here, right? Yes. Just because you're 50 doesn't mean you're, you're 50, your last however many years are should be worse than your first ones. I mean, I want to be the hundred year old, you know, pushing the lawnmower out front and running around with my great, 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 great grandkids. Right. And you right. know, the, that's what I, and I hope that I'm blessed with that opportunity. If not, well, I've lived my life the best I could. I'm not going to regret those choices, but that is the important thing is having those tough conversations with patients and listen, there is more for your life than what you're doing. Why do I want that more for you than you ask the hard questions and it's okay. But those are the questions that they're going to appreciate and love you for doing because their life can change. And that's, I just fiercely love my patients. And I think that's what we have to understand is that we just got to love them to understand so they can see and have those conversations. There's just like way. I, there's, There's, so much suffering. Suffering. There's so yes. much suffering in the world. It's completely suffering. unnecessary. It's very, very sad. Very sad. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%, but it's interesting how many, how many patients are, you know, pretty complacent is, you know, oh, I take this pill and it's fine. And if, maybe if I was younger and, you know, I hear all these things too. It's interesting. Yes. Right. And, but I, I totally agree with you. And I love that straightforward approach. It's like, we can make it better. <laughs> Why don't right. you want this? But, you know, I get really excited. Like it's really hard to contain my excitement when I look at the potential opportunities for patients, right? The interesting thing is I tell people like, this is, listen, you and I are going to have to have an agreement. I'm a big fan of the dopamine hit and I call it veggie crack. So I'm going to tell you some vegetables, you're going to get better and I'm going to get my dopamine fix. Okay. So <laughs> let's keep doing that. You know? And so we just really try to make them understand. I, I really, and I think we're just got to infuse hope into someone, right? So if you infuse hope in someone and you get them excited about, I mean, I can get well, you open their eyes, like you can have a different destination. Your destination does not have to be illness and sickness and pain and suffering. Now, it doesn't mean life doesn't out throw suffering at you on a change. That happens. But it, you can handle it better. You can deal with the stresses every day if you're feeling better. You can live the purpose that you were here, put on this earth to do, if you don't have to deal with so much of the burden of the chronic disease. So yeah. let me help you. But you have to make the decision. This is going to be the key to your winning. Mm -hmm. And that really is what I do. So I, plus I call I, it knowing your why. 
You yeah, have to yeah. know why you're doing this. For what? But the why is one thing, right? So the why is your goal and your destination. But I think we need to understand behavior design. And I really, that's why I started my podcast, because I really wanted to understand why one peop, some people were very successful and others weren't, right? So if we think about the why, yes, but the motivation waxes and wanes. Like it'll, in the 30 seconds can change. But it's the ability. So when I first met BJ Fogg, he wrote Tiny Habits, and um, Dr. Judd Brewer, who wrote The Craving Mind, who both have become good friends of mine now because I just keep harassing them. And I'm just like, you need to, I need to know more of what's in your brain. And how can I help my patients? It's the ability, right? So if we make something hard to do, we're less likely to do it, even if we have high motivation. But if we make something easy to do, even on those low motivation days, it's gonna be easier to do. And there are techniques and ways to do that. And once you describe to a patient that they have control over that, that they can actually start a very tiny habit and build it into something massive, that is like power to them. And then if they can understand mindfulness and understanding the cravings are just this physiologic thing that occur that you can think your wealth yourself through them. You can ask these questions, becoming mindful. And it's empowering for them. And they that is the most incredible stories. And to talk to these patients as they progress and evolve over time and just seeing them and they become inspirational to me in my own life. I mean, it's just amazing what these people can do. Absolutely. I had a client who was almost homebound with, uh, with Crohn's, horrible Crohn's wow. from a lot of her life. She was on Humira and she could barely get off. She was asking her children to bring her a glass of water because she was just uh, really couldn't get off the couch and afraid to go out in the afternoon. Anyway, we got her off of her Humira. She was very interested in doing that. We got her off her Humira, which her doctor said she would never be able to do because she would then have some flare and not be able to be treatable or something. And then she went to graduate school. She's got, already got one master. She's working on another. Incredible stuff that she had never thought was possible for her yep. because of this diet, because she started to eat more plants. Yeah. And these cases are typical, right? So we don't need the disclosure like all, all these you know, commercials you see. Like, these are your typical cases, my friend. You too can have this. <laughs> so, yeah, amazing. Well, Dr. Marvis, yes. thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here today. Like, uh, like we could clearly talk to you forever because we have lots of things to talk about. So, and we would learn so much. You're amazing. You're amazing, and you're just your enthusiasm, and also, and and just your your understanding of the science, and just it's just uh, you're a, a well of knowledge. And so, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to us. Well, thank you, and I and I do this for my patients, and I just I, I'm diving into the lipid research right now also because i just think it's so important that if i don't know the answer at least i got to reach out to someone who does and i at least need to have the beginning of an answer and where to help patients but it's just it's so incredible and it's such a joy to see people get well so thank you for what you're doing and your work with the most precious resource we have which is our our babies and their mamas and if those are just those are long-term consequences for generations we have no idea what the work you're doing now and profound generations now so thank you for thank what you're doing well we hope to get it studied soon we're going to be meeting we're i'm really trying to reach out to researchers who could put this to the test and then maybe we'll get published in your mat in your uh, journal oh, that'd be um, awesome. but also if people want to get in touch with you and they want to work with you yes you are at plant-based telehealth right yes i am the co-founder with my dear friend anthony masiello of plant-based telehealth it's a plant-based for lifestyle medicine it's been an incredible journey and we have grown exponentially um, since then we're nine months old and we're already we have the beloved dr clapper on board with us and my dear friend dr chris miller who has her own lupus recovery story mm -hmm. who's an incredible human and probably one of the smartest people i know and we're bringing on two additional physicians in the next 30 to 45 days we are growing like this because of partnerships and really huge support from people like you chef aj mastering diabetes and just some incredible people who are willing to you know, have us on there and share with their audience so they know that we exist. And, you know, we hope to continue to tap into our network. And, but yes, you can go to plantbasedtelehealth.com, request a patient portal invitation. It's a HIPAA compliant EHR. We, we do our video chats like this. We order medications as needed. We order labs and we can see you. I've seen patients from all over the world, as is Dr. Clapper and Dr. Miller, and it's just been a wonderful opportunity. And then I also have the healthyhumanrevolution.com, which is the resource that I really wanted to build to teach people how, right? So that's where the podcast is hosted, but we have courses that really teach people, like, for example, if you have children, 
what do my kids need at different stages and ages? And I created even a, a cartoon <laughs> cookbook. I have Brock the Rock Broccoli. We have eight different cartoon characters, uh, little cookbooks with them, you know, 58, 57 tips to get your kids to eat more vegetables. Um, and just some incredible, and Nourish is coming out also. That's a great yeah. book. And I need to get that book. I haven't read that yet. But the- Oh, amazing. Yeah, amazing. yeah I'm- Exactly. And this just walks people through if they have questions about supplements, but also, you know, like how do you shop on a budget eating healthy? How do I do mindful eating? How do I transition to a plant-based diet? We have a seven day course that walks you through that. And, it, and honestly, that if they just did the seven days, that would be honestly all they need to know. And yeah, we've had some amazing feedback working on some other things and super excited. And I run that with my two boys, Jonathan and Gabriel. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, it's just been a, a blast and to see things grow and we will continue. If we see a need, we'll try to fulfill it. So thank you. Oh, amazing. All right. Incredible. We have back again. Incredible. Thank you. Appreciate All right. it. We'll see. We'll you have soon. to have you back. We'd love to have you back. Thank, thank you. you. I'd love to be back. Thank and we'll you. see you guys next year. So Deborah and I will be taking some time off for the holidays. So we'll be seeing you next year. Bye-bye. <laughs>